Hi, uh, this is a video about how I made my first piece of music using bespoke synth. Um, I'm making this video for two reasons. First thing to understand, it's not a tutorial. Um, I have no education in, in anything related to this. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I have screwed around with various ways of trying to make electronic music for um, on and off and mostly off for several years and I never found anything that actually like allowed me to do what I was trying to do um, I never understood the interfaces very well I just I just never got anywhere um, and overall it was a lot like um, the problems I have trying to learn music by other methods because I have occasionally tried to look into other ways of doing things I, i've never been able to do it um but that's part of why i'm making this video um you know i this this software is is not perfect but it's definitely very powerful and its interface made a lot more sense to me than other things like it that i had tried and as a result i was actually able to com pose a, a whole actual piece of music that had real intention behind some of its expression and that's not something i've ever done before even though i've wanted to do it for years uh, so the first reason i'm making this video is just to prove to you maybe uh that you can do it too uh it doesn't matter if you don't know what you're doing it doesn't matter if you're literally a dog you can you can do something with this um the other reason i'm making it is because uh it is software that uh as far as i know it's still in development and um it seems like you know if if i were working on a piece of software i would want to hear from people who have no chops whatsoever you know what is their experience with it you know what what are the first things that you're drawn to when you have no idea what the hell you're doing um and what problems do you encounter so uh, hopefully this can be good feedback for the developer of bespoke um i think it's really great software i hope it continues to improve uh so with that out of the way um i'm just gonna start I'm going to hit play on this thing, um, and it's going to be a little while because of the way I originally did this. It's, it's, it's not very efficient, um, sorry, but um, as we do get to the music, which will start around here, the first thing you'll notice uh, if you listened to the original track, which you almost definitely didn't because I'm nobody, uh, but if you had you would notice that there's a sound at the end that's missing, and that's because of uh, one of the main re things that I wanted to talk to the dev about what I had trouble with. Um, but just to go through this, like, from the beginning, um, if you had listened to it, which, again, you haven't, but if you had, the first thing you probably notice is this this heartbeat sound going on, which I didn't really necessarily intend when I was first making it for it to sound like a heartbeat. What happened was um, basically the circle sequencer was literally the first thing I, I dropped onto the canvas here. Um, you know, I, I, I looked at the, the things, like when you first open up Bespoke, all you're going to have is this transport thing, which, as I understand it, is just sort of the main clock that underlies all of the different modules that manage time for you if you're an idiot who has no rhythm like me. Um, and then there's this scale thing, which um, it defaults to B minor gypsy, which isn't even the scale that is in the videos I've seen by the dev, so I don't know why I default to that, but it sounded okay for this song anyway. Um, I don't know what B minor gypsy is or means. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know anything about music theory. Um, I've, the more I 
uh, look into it, actually, the more I think a lot of it might be kind of made up, because, like, I can't hear any of that stuff. Um, I, I like music, and I like pretty complicated music, but I can't hear any of the things that they talk about when they talk really hard about music theory. It's just like, what? Tension? What? Um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I... I the, so, when you, when you first start up, all there is is this transport and the scale, and then there's also the gain, and a splitter, and two outputs, and um, I yeeted those, because this is in mono, since it's just like a chiptune kind of thing. I didn't need any stereo effects. I could, I could use stereo effects, and you can do that in a chiptune, certainly. Like, I like songs that have, like, cool panning effects, but... You know, I don't know how to do that stuff yet, and um, I had trouble getting it to even work, like, just as one sound, so, you know, baby steps. Um, but like I said, the first thing I actually dropped onto the canvas was the circle sequencer, which um, basically my thinking there was, you know, uh, the first thing I click on is instruments, because you got to have instruments to play music, right? And I, I kind of know what a sequencer is, because... Like I said, I've attempted to make music before. Um, I, I actually, like, tried with uh, uh, a, a Nintendo-type sequencer more than once, and I just could not get my head around how to actually get notes onto the thing. Uh, but I moused over this, and it says, Polyrhythmic sequencer, sequencer that just plays a loop as a circle. Okay, uh, Adam Neely likes polyrhythms. Maybe that'll make my music sound good. Let's drop that in there. And that's basically why I stuck this thing there. And it just had all ones here. So when it starts out, uh, the, with the pitch is all ones, all you get is this kind of a click sound, especially since, like, the first, the first thing I hooked it up to, because I really love square waves, was a square wave. And when you have a pitch of one and it's a square wave, it turns out it sounds like a click. And I know that because that's what these two little yellow dots here still are. They're a clicking sound that fit really well. With... Like what, what I first did was just like, I, I, I know that the general idea is this thing is like a clock. And every time this clock goes around, it's going to play notes that you stick on that clock, right? So, I figure if this is polyrhythms, then, oh, yeah, look, number of steps in this ring. So I changed a couple of those so that they weren't four anymore, and now it's like fours and sevens and nines. And yay, polyrhythms, completely by accident. And I just clicked some random things on them, and I, I moved a couple of the dots because I was like, oh, wait, this, this sounds good. Let's see what happens if I have two dots in the same place. Oh, that sounds good. You know, and and um, I haven't done it for this piece, but I did learn that you can, like, change the volume of each of these little dots by, like, pulling on them. Like, I, if I grab this and pull it, I can make that sound bigger, or I can make it smaller, or whatever. Um, but, like, just the regular dot was okay, because what I wanted to do here was just, like lay down sort of the underlying, I guess they call it a bass line, which is like, here's the, here's the background tones that don't change much, and they're the ground that the rest of your song is built on, sort of. And I wound up with something completely by accident that is kind of reminiscent of a heartbeat, and it, it's like a spooky 8-bit heartbeat, and I'm like, okay... That's great. I wasn't trying to make a spooky uh, tune when I first opened this up, but, you know, the first thing I do is, you know, a sound that's, that's pretty cool and it fits in with, you know, spooky 8-bit music. So, hey, let's, let's do more things that sound like that. And that kind of informed uh, the pitches and melodies that I chose for the other instruments and stuff. Um, so, I also, I also played around with, you know, 
the pitches, obviously. Um, you can see here, like, it's... Uh, I made them all, like, tens, because I wanted them to have, you know, a fairly simple relationship to each other, no matter what the pitches actually were, because I know that that's how you get things to happen in music, is, is relationships between notes. Um, and you don't have to necessarily know what those relationships will sound like to start with, because I sure don't. Um, that's, that's one of the good things about making music with these, like, electronic things that keep stuff in order for you, is, like, I, I don't have to have any idea what it's going to sound like. I can, I can guess and check, and, you know, I, I, I feel like as I get better at this... I'll probably be able to do more things on purpose as opposed to just, well, that's good. But, you know, um, music is ultimately a big list of decisions. And if all the decisions in your life are deliberate and very well considered, then your life is probably sucky and boring. And, you know, it's kind of that way with music, too. So I have to uh first learn to be okay with just trying stuff and it worked this time it worked really well um so yeah like um like i said like this this whole thing here this wasn't a thing at first it was just this going on and on forever and i was trying to imagine things that would make it sound cooler and I had this idea in my head of, like, exploring some kind of cave in an adventure game. And that's where the title is from, Scary Hole. Like, yeah, this is your journey into the scary hole. Uh, have fun with that. Um, I, I threw on another oscillator. This one's, uh, as you can see, a sawtooth. Um, and that's that's this this blue kind of sound here um in the in the green part it's it's the most like it, it, it's it's like the main melody for most of the song i guess you would say that gives it that feel of of spooky caveness um and basically uh I, I imagined a melody in my head, and without knowing what notes would possibly ever be that, I just kind of, I pushed things on here, and I moved them around until I got this thing. Um, I knew that the note canvas was what I wanted once I opened it up for the first time, because, like, um... I've seen things with, you know, piano rolls before, and that is, that is a very intuitive way of showing what's going on with a particular piece of music or even just an individual, individual instrument with it, in it. And so this is what I built that on. I, like, you can see these, oh yeah, this is an F6. I totally know what the hell an F6 is. No, I, I... I clicked things on here, like it says here, shift click to add a note. Like I can just, I can stick another one here if I want to. I'm not going to because it's going to sound bad. Um, so go away. Um, but, you know, I just, I pushed these things around until I had the relationships that were in my head. Because that's the amazing thing about music is I think... I think most people actually probably have really beautiful, perfect sounding music in their head because we all have firmware for that, right? Like this is something that we have a natural intuitive understanding of. It's something that even animals can get into and groove with to a certain degree. Um, it's not something that needs a lot of like intellectual structure necessarily it's something that if you have a way to play with it like this 
you can get closer and closer to what's in your head and it's like um, it's all, almost more like you're sculpting the song as opposed to like yeah I know what note I'm gonna play here like you're 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 chipping away all of the things that are not the music you have in your head um, but yeah so like that there's that that main Actually, wait. No, I'm completely wrong. Ha! Huh. This is the other, the other melody. This is the one that plays here. That's supposed to be like, hey, you know, you found a spooky thing in the spooky cave. That's the second melody. Is the one I've been showing you. So I'm not even in the right place. Like, you can see how little you have to understand this to be able to make music with it. Um, I, I practically did like 90% of this by accident. Um. But I just kept making better and better accidents as I tried to get closer and closer what was in my head, and here we are. Um, yeah, that's that's how the note canvas part works. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to turn that off. I meant to make it bigger. So you can see, like, it's, yeah. Uh, seasoned ears will know that I, I was an idiot for thinking earlier that I was in the right place, because this is obviously a sine wave. Um, I actually listen to enough chip tunes that I probably should have known that, but I am literally a dog. Uh, but anyway, um, so the main thing here that's that I'm actually making the movie, the, the video to explain is the troubles I've had with this group control and by extension also this event canvas to a certain extent. Uh, the event canvas seems to work nicely with some things and then with other things it just occasionally wigs out for no apparent reason. Um, and I did finish the song, so it is something that is salvageable even by somebody who doesn't really have any idea what the hell they're doing, but it took a few tries. So I'm going to try to explain the difficulty I had. Um, basically the whole idea of this event canvas is like, right, I've got this circle sequencer going, it's making this cool heartbeat, I've got this other oscillator, you know, expressing, you know walking through this dark spooky cave um and then i've got a third oscillator and it's making the cave even spookier and that's great but if they're all just going all at once forever like that's that's not a song that's a bunch of noises like there's no there's no story that you're telling with just this permanent now of all these different sounds even if it does sound pretty cool um and like that's that's not to knock, like, if you make music that sounds like a permanent now kind of thing. Like, that, I think, is what, uh, what powers a lot of really popular music, because most music traditionally has always been, uh, more performance than composition. And, you know, a lot of the most popular artists of any given time are... are uh, really big into improvisation, and that's certainly no different with electronic music. Like, they have, like, their music is all about what's going on with the mix now. So, uh, it's just, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to tell a story, and that means that there needs to be events. So, the event canvas is great for having events, which basically say, all right, this, this heartbeat thing, it's going to start here. It's going to end here. Start here, end here. Start here, end here. It, it lets you... It lets you put things together in, in ways that... You know... You get the idea. Except when it doesn't. Which is uh, what I found with trying to get... So first off, it... It took me forever to figure out a way to get, like, two oscillators kind of playing as one unit. Um, I, I f found out that, like, basically you have to 
stick them both into an effect chain and it doesn't matter if you even really want to put any effects on it which i eventually did but um like that seems to be the only way to get them to actually play as one unit and even then it's like i had to take these note creators note creators are basically like if you don't want a melody if you want a particular instrument to just always make this sound like maybe you only want that note once ever or maybe you want that note to be a drone so you would just turn it on permanently um you can see there's there's like on boxes here um and i did finally find this group control thing which allows me to have this and this and also this noise generator operate in tandem uh which is what i needed for this part at the end of the song which i'll, I'll actually turn that on so you can hear it on the next loop um let me let me just do something real quick so because this is there's no reason for this to be as big as it is and actually in the final like version of this i did actually have it shorter but um uh yeah i didn't save it and so it's too big and it takes way too long to go back to the start of the loop so um still too long but it's better now uh actually let's let's do it more just so it's 24 measures yeah that's good save um so now there's less of this dead air before we get back to playing the song um this this isn't intended to be like a loop uh from here to here is actually like the length of the song as i threw it up on soundcloud um but uh this song here has not been playing so far and the reason for that is some of this jank that's going on with this group control. Um, if there is a better way to fix the things I am about to do, I don't know them. Um, because, again, this is literally the first thing I've ever done. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but what I found is that rather often uh, a a wire going from an event canvas to one of these group control things and, and even like some of the like i i had i had similar problems with like just trying to connect to check boxes or trigger the trigger buttons or whatever like it took me a long time to figure out how to make it do this thing that i'm doing and the reason it took me so long is that um i i was actually trying to do it the same way several times but what would happen is if I had to save or start over because I messed something up or I was trying to adjust, like, one of the actual sounds or something, uh, or, you know, if, if, I, if I saved and came back later, if I load the thing, or if I hit reset on this transport thing to go back to the beginning of the, the, the you know, the time, uh, what'll happen is that sometimes uh this group enabled just doesn't seem to want to actually do anything like that that like all of the wires will be there just like i left them but it just magically doesn't work anymore and at first i thought and it, th that's why these things are here and this is this is another problem that did exist and i had to fix um these two things here are for um uh where is it uh right here and uh here respectively because uh what i wanted to do and what i did accomplish even though there are other things with this sound that i did not accomplish what i did accomplish is i wanted to get these two oscillators to start from here at their full volume doing their thing and to over the course of this event or actually because i use this ramper the, over the course of i guess four notes i don't know how long that is compared to this box um but 
uh, over the course of four notes, these oscillators would um, get quieter and quieter until they were muted, and this noise, the white noise, would get louder until that's all that's going on in this box here. It's just that white noise. Because, um, like, uh, my, my intention here was that, like, you know, this is the it got you sound. Like, oh no, you're in the spooky cave and a spooky thing happened and that's it for you. Uh, and, um, uh, I didn't quite get there because I wanted these oscillators to make much more of a louder and harsher and grumblier growling kind of sound. Like, you know how monsters in, in those old games would sound. I wanted something more like that. And I, I don't know enough about how to apply effects and whatever to, to actually get that effect, but I did get something. And I thought, okay, well... This is still sounding pretty good for, like, my first attempt at, at making this spooky cave song that I didn't even originally think I was going to make. Um, so I, I went with it as it is, but to get it to actually trigger like it's supposed to here and do these complicated things with the rampers was a task, because like I said, sometimes if you... Uh, reload a state, or if you reset to z the, uh, to zero on the timeline, um, it it this this box here, the group control thing, just doesn't seem to understand what it's supposed to be doing anymore. Um, and I don't know if that's because I was doing something wrong. Or if it's because it's janky, I, I legitimately have no way to tell the difference. Um, one thing that's definitely janky is when you delete a module, like you'll wind up with these wires to nowhere. You can't get them to not be wires to nowhere until you connect that thing to something else again. But I'm going to have to anyway in order to get uh, this this group enabled. and And... By the way, I've just reset the time so that we can get right into it when I'm done correcting this. It still might not work. Um, I, I had to screw around with this a couple different times, and whether it worked or not seemed to be almost kind of luck, because I could swear I was doing it the same way every time. And another thing I noticed is that uh, this will also sometimes screw things up on this note canvas for the main, uh, the green melody. Because I have no idea why it doesn't happen every time, but sometimes when I do stuff with this mess over here and I'm resetting the timeline and I'm loading states and all this other crap, um, these... High, these notes, the high ones on this this main melody, just don't get played for some reason. And I have no idea why that happens, or even how to fix it, other than just, like, reloading state and trying again. It's weird. I have no... Like, sometimes... Um, sometimes what will work is if I delete one of these events and replace it, and I just have to remake the same event in the same place again. That's a bit annoying, but that does seem to usually fix whatever this issue is that I'm having. Uh, so I, it's either the event canvas or... Well, it has to be something with the event canvas, because the, um, the, the group control doesn't touch this guy over here. So something about the event canvas is is causing what the events are to kind of get corrupted. And I don't know how that's happening, but that seems to be part of the problem. Um, hopefully that does not happen this time. Hopefully when I start playing this again, you'll just be able to hear the song the way it's supposed to be. Uh, where's the... Right. So... And go in here and get group control. 
And this is how I'm going to turn on these things. I've got this uh, square wave here. It's a really nice, low, rumbly square wave. Uh, and then here I've got... Um, this is a triangle wave that I did weird stuff to that I didn't know what it was until it sounded kind of cool. And uh, then I pipe them both into this tremolo thing, which, again, originally the effect chain is just there so I can have these both actually play in Unition. Um, and I run it through this tremolo because I thought that made it sound like even cooler and more like and it got you noise even though it's still kind of slow and not really punchy like that should be and it fits really well with like fading into this noise here um and then i've got these rampers which do what i mentioned earlier about making these two controls actually do the the fading effect that i was talking about and in order to do all that crap, I have to have a group control because um, the way it works, if it works, hopefully it works, uh, like I go from this event here and it plugs into this sucker. And now when we hit that event in the timeline, it's going to trigger anything that this stuff is connected to. Uh, and you only see one plug thing like anytime you see one of these dots that's a place you can drag a cable from uh so you only see one here at the moment but it's group control well the group is you know arbitrarily defined so you plug in one thing like to this on box and then this on box and actually this is one of the better tool tips because like right in here, connect to several checkboxes. That let me know exactly how I was supposed to use this. I was struggling for like half an hour or more looking for something that would do this. And then I finally hit on this. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I've needed this whole time. Great. Um, it, it Like I said, it does seem like it's a little janky, but it is exactly what I needed here. It just lets me turn on all these boxes and then I can also uh, tell it to turn on these rampers so it'll do the more complicated internal timing of these two signals um, and hopefully this works uh, I may wind up having the problem again where I have to reconstruct either uh, this event or this event, or both of them, in order to get them to actually play the way they're su supposed to. Uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, maybe I'll have white coat syndrome, and when I'm recording the video for the dev, it won't happen. Uh, but anyway, uh, here you get to see, well, you get to hear an actual full performance of uh, scary hole dot wave. So here we go. stops because it got you that's how the song works but yeah there you go that's that's scary hole dot wave and um as you can see the problem i've been complaining about did not actually happen so now i look like a crazy person that's cool um but yeah um the whole thrust of this video is bespoke is a little janky it's a little tricky but it's very very powerful um it has an interface that it's 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 a bit minimalist it doesn't help you but that's kind of a good thing because interfaces for basically every other music software i've ever used is like 
here's five million buttons. You have no what they do. Bye. Um, or you have no idea what they do. Um, and so the fact that this actually starts with just kind of a blank space and you put things into it and you experiment with those things on their own terms until you get them to make noises like that that really worked out for me and i feel like this isn't necessarily going to work for everyone because it does like this method of music creation obviously requires some computer literacy and a lot of people don't quite have it that good um and it also requires computer hardware and a lot of people definitely don't have it that good but um if somebody with as little skill as I have can make music with something that's this complex, like just about everyone can do something good with some kind of tool available to them. Um, music, music can be for everybody, and I think that modern tools have the potential to make it a lot more for everybody. Um, and it really excites me that that we're getting these things that you know if we can if we can transpose these methods to cheaper and cheaper uh hardware and easier and easier interfaces like we'll get to a point where everyone can play the music that's been inside them all the time and that's a really beautiful idea to me so um thank you the developer of bespoke for um, helping me start to do this. Um, I guess that's all. Bye now.